It's not about falling down. It's about how fast you can get up after you have fallen down. That's where the magic is. Discover what it takes to be a world-class entrepreneur. No success story ever happened without any struggle at the beginning. And how you can have it all from the greatest minds in business. Why do you think people give up when business gets tough? Welcome to the Woman Entrepreneur Podcast. Here is your host, international award-winning entrepreneur and founder of Woman Entrepreneur, Erna Vassan. Bassett and welcome to the Woman Entrepreneur Podcast. Today is a very special day as we have the one and only Anthony Lolly in the house all the way from New York City. Anthony, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We, we are so lucky to have you today on the show and uh, we just spoke about this off air now. We are literally like 16 hours apart from each other. I'm in New Zealand so we are already on Thursday morning and you, you are in New York. And you're on Wednesday evening, is that correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, I love that you get a jump start. It, although, typically, I don't go to sleep till 4 o'clock in the morning here. So, Because uh, that's just how you have to do it as an entrepreneur. You have to kind of get the work done in the middle of the night. But I love getting the jump on the competition. You got it over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You should, you should come and visit. I mean, you can, you can wake up like 6 a.m. and then you'll still be early. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, Anthony, we're going to jump right into this. Please tell us, for the 1% of people that's living in the world that does not know who is Anthony Lolly, tell us, who are you? Awesome. Well, uh, I'm a guy who's the son of uh, an immigrant. You know, my mom uh, was from Ecuador and came to the United States with uh, $20 in her pocket. Uh, and then she had to give the only 20 she had to the person to stamp her visa so she could stay in the United States, lived in an abandoned building, worked in uh, sewing factories. They called them sweatshops, eventually became a beautician and a home attendant. My father uh, of Italian descent um, were, was a World War II Navy veteran, became a public school teacher, uh, and then eventually moonlighted as a street entertainer. He had a big blue and gold macaw, and he would uh, dress up like a sailor and, and take people's pictures with the bird with a Polaroid camera. So those were my parents. And then, of course, they had me. And so I grew up from very humble beginnings. And uh, I had a childhood experience that changed my life forever and made me want to become a multimillionaire and make sure that my parents uh, could live a very comfortable life. So at the age of 19, I decided to get into real estate. And by the time I was 23, I was a multimillionaire. So I started a real estate company, eventually franchised it to 70 locations. I started a real estate school, gave it to my parents. It became the second largest real estate school in New York that licensed over 40,000 people to get into the real estate industry. I have an entertainment company. I invest in small films and projects and movies and, and people use my home which has uh, been featured on television. It's called the Lolly Mansion. In their movies and music videos, people drive my Rolls Royce in their movies and music videos. Uh, wow. I'm an author, a best-selling author, and uh, I'm a regular contributor to every major news network from CNN to ABC to NBC to CBS to Fox. I talk about real estate things that are happening. Uh, so that's me on a nutshell. Now I'm a, I'm a social media influencer. That is, that is so, and you know what, and you are still so grateful and so humble. Um, you, you know, you had a rough start in life, but you kept on hustling and you made it work and you stuck to what you wanted and you achieved it. That is, that is, that's applaudable. Really. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you just touched on uh, one of the questions I was about to ask about um, your business model. Um, uh, so you said that you have um, decided to franchise this. Why, why did you decide to do the franchise model instead of owning all of them yourself? What was the... Well, you know, I had a very successful small mom and pop brokerage, but I was doing large numbers, high volume numbers. Yeah. But, you know, when you build a successful organization, 
you know, your lifestyle changes, you start to be able to get nicer things. And so some of your top people, you know, they, they, in order for them to get to that level, they have to kind of be the boss. So I was losing some of my top salespeople because I had such a great operation, great training, great incentives, and the salespeople had no overhead. So they decided to kind of uh, start their own organizations in direct competition with mine. So I decided to franchise really because I was, uh, instead of breeding my own competitors, I would breed my own family members. So franchising was a way for me to kind of uh, control talent, give them the ability to be their own boss, but not, not in my backyard. That is, that is very smart. And still, and still built on the Rapid Realty um, brand. Yes, exactly. So it's a brand that they were familiar with, that they helped grow, uh, and they would want to continue to grow if they own their yeah. own. So yeah. I, I decided to go franchising, and, uh, and then that, you know, it just hit the stratosphere after that. That is, that is very smart business. And uh, tell me, three of your biggest life and business lessons that you have learned throughout your, um, with, throughout your journey. I think that, well, lesson number one is research. A lot of people don't do research into the business that they want to get involved in. You know, you need to look at uh, past failures, current successes, and up and coming competition. I think you have to look at all three categories and you have to be an expert in the field that you want to get into. And it's also important that you kind of work uh, for a competitor or somebody that might be a future competitor. Uh, I think that's, that's number one. I think number two, understand that people that are going to work for you are not going to work for you forever. So you need to build a concept that can sustain turnover. I can't tell you how many times I've been to a restaurant or a bank or a business. And if you go there and enough times, you're going to see a lot of turnover in, in employees. So you need to understand that just not everybody that's with you in the beginning is going to be with you to the end. So you have to kind of build a good system that can withstand turnover. And I guess the third and, f and third lesson, and there's many more, there's hundreds of them, but um, I guess the third one is uh, really set goals. You know, I believe in the power of positive thinking. I believe in vision boards. I believe in... Uh, 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 willing your way to success and surrounding yourself around positive people and positivity. It's so true, whether it's, it's listening to a, a podcast like yours or reading your magazine and seeing, uh, getting motivation. You need that daily dose of mind vitamins in order to survive in a very, very tough world. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you wake up in the morning? What time do you wake up in the morning? And what is the first thing that you do in the morning when you wake up? I wake up usually around six o'clock in the morning. The first thing I do is I check my phone. My phone, you know, I operate mo the majority of my business through the phone. I have a good team that works for me. So the only calls that I get are either new business, which is new revenue, or extreme emergencies that go past my team and ha and I have to I have to address. So usually I I, I take a look at those and and make sure that I give my team the right uh, um, uh, uh, goals to reach or to handle, put out fires, stuff like that. And then I move on to uh, the new business that comes into the phone. You know, every day, you know, I've, I've catered my life to phone calls being about business, new business coming in. Yeah, yeah. And would you say that you, you have a well-balanced life, work, and, you know, the play and work type, um, type of balance? Absolutely. You know, I make enough time for the gym. I make a, a enormous amount of time for the family, uh, okay. friends. And I'm very fortunate where I kind of built a system where I have a lot of friends uh, and, and almost like family that work for me. So I have a very good, I'm a big quality of life guy. I've been in business going on 21 years now. So um, I have it pretty much figured out and uh, you only get one life to live and you got to live it right. And uh, so, yeah, I have a pretty, pretty great balance. Yeah. And you just mentioned that you, you, you have family members within your business. How, what advice can you give people, give entrepreneurs that's in the same boat that's working with family, living with family and spending a lot of time with family. And, you know, sometimes it can get a bit tricky or they can get a bit of, you know, um, 
tension between family with working in a business. What is your advice on that? Uh, the advice is that uh, you should sit down and see, you know, on a business level, remove the family and say, how much salary is this person worth, right? Sometimes the family member might be working for cheaper than it would cost you to pay somebody to do their job. So although there may be tension, you know, it goes both ways. It may be tension because they're not properly compensated for the amount of work that they're taking on because of love and affection as a family member. Yeah. And it might be the reverse. It might be that you're overpaying this family member for not putting in the right amount of work, you know? So you, you kind of have to kind of uh, talk about the elephant in the room and air it out in order for you kind of to be happy because you don't want anything that's going to strain the relationship. Of course, of course. It's, it's all about, you know, th they value within the business and how much they value is worth to you and your clients. Exactly. Like, you know, I look at it, I always say to myself, well, when I give, uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements and I, and then this question is a very hot topic. It's part of some of our speaking that we do. And, uh, I say to them, well, one, one gentleman said, well, I have, I'm, my brother's working for me and I'm uh, not really holding his weight. And, uh, I said, well, imagine you owned, uh, a plastic surgery center. Would you hire your brother to do plastic surgery on you or your mother or any of your family members if they were not the best at what they did, you know? Yeah. And he said, no way. So that is, that is your answer. You know, your business should be treated the same way a plastic surgeon would treat his staff and his customers. And yeah. when you have that attitude about your business and, and you're not going to make those mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you think women make great entrepreneurs and leaders? Well, my organization is 60% female based. And wow. let me tell you something. It's women starting from my mom you know, I'm a pro, pro women and they're more successful than men because first of all, um, you know, they can, they can kind of be tough without getting the reaction where if I'm tough with somebody. So a lot of the times, you know, the women in my organization, they do much better at really commanding the room, uh, commanding the sale and getting the most dollar for per transaction because they can just get away with more and it just doesn't come off like as some tough jerk trying to just you know uh bully his way into a situation so you know female have the upper hand uh and they have tact and they have pizzazz and they have patience and um and and a lot of wis uh, wisdom so uh, you know i for me i think women have a significant advantage if given the right opportunities. Uh, I mean, you know, there's countries that have women presidents. And, uh, you know, for me, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. New Zealand, New Zealand actually appointed um, last year um, a female prime minister, Jacinda Ardern, and she's in her 30s. And she's, wow. yeah, she, I think she's one of the youngest. So it's pretty incredible that, you know, that the, that the world is changing and women are getting these opportunities to be in these big roles, leadership roles. I mean, she went to go visit the Queen of England about a few weeks ago. Obama flew in to come see her as well. So it's, it's really cool. It is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And being an investor yourself, what are the five tips that you can give to business owners when they want to attract investors within the company five tips for business owners that want to attract investors to invest in their company yeah that's yeah. it well first of all there's smart money and then there's money and then there's dumb money so uh -huh. first you need to make a decision on what kind of money you want Okay. Do you want an investor slash advisor uh, slash somebody that's going to kind of, first of all, if they have the money that you don't exactly, and they got it through an intelligent means, then you have to be in a position to kind of humble yourself 
And even though they may not know about the business as much as you do, they know about business. So yeah. do you want that? Or it might be the opposite. It might be you might not want somebody interfering. You know what you're going to do with the capital. You just want a silent investor. And that's that. That Somebody yeah. wants their money in and their money out. And do you just want dumb money? Somebody that just has money from some sort of a windfall, a lawsuit, an inheritance, an insurance thing. And that's the only thing that they have. And, you know, they would have gambled it away anyway. I mean, it all depends. Or maybe it's the only thing they have and they're, they're not going to stop bothering you about what's going on until they feel it's safe. Do you want annoying money? So I think it's very important where you kind of decide. In my life, I turn down more business. Therefore, I make more money because time is money. So, you know, you may want to think about, you know, that factor, you know, first and foremost. Second of all is um, what kind of pitch material do you have? What kind of PDF did you put together? Deck book? Um, you know, does it outline the competition? Does it say too much? Does it say too little? Uh, have you tried pitching in front of friends, friends and family? Uh, have you tried pitching in front of small business owners and see what their reaction is? So you kind of need to create your own focus group and get their opinion about how you're pitching things. The third thing is, um, have you tried institutional investors? Have you tried pitching to regular banks before you go to uh, 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 other investors? Have you tried just trying a traditional method or taking a business loan out or looking into every uh, uh, possible grant opportunities, governmental grant opportunities that are available to you. So that's, that's key. Have you turned over every stone? You have to leave no stone unturned, you know? And the fourth one is, have you had somebody play devil's advocate, poke holes into your concept, mentally beat you up about what you're doing wrong, so that you can come up with all your defenses because when you're in front of people that are investors, you better have all your questions ready. You better be quick with your responses because confidence is key and knowledge of your own concept is so important. So you have to have both and you have to be ready. You need to do a little bit of sparring before you go out and you do that. And the fifth one is, which is very important to investors, what is their exit strategy, right? So, you know, I've sat down where people have asked me to, to invest in their business. I, ju I was just in a meeting a couple of days ago with, an, with a guy who has an excellent uh, online concept that he was asking myself and my partner Carlos to invest in. And I said to him, well, if we put, you know, let's say this, this $2 million investment and all of a sudden somebody offers $50 million in a year, you know, we can exit, uh, would you want to take the exit? And the person is like, no, I want to be Mark Zuckerberg. I want to, you know, so you have to kind of also understand that it, it, what is your exit strategy realistically, you know? So I think that's the fifth and most important thing. And will your exit strategy change depending on investor or not? That is that is really amazing, amazing, amazing advice. Because you know, with when you do start a business, the first thing is when you start a business, you you start a business to sell it. You know, you need to think about the about the end result in mind. You know, and I was just having this discussion with some with a lady um, today, and she was saying, you know, I don't want to sell my business. I'm like, why would you start a business and not want to sell it? You know, if it's so good, it's so profitable, and you are ready to move on to something else, why did why do you just want to Close down a company and not sell it, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I um, mean, I think people that are afraid to sell their business, mm -hmm. they're one-trick ponies, one-hit wonders. You know, yeah. I think that you're, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're, you should be like an artist. This is not your only Picasso. No, you have no. many, many works of art. No, I, I completely, 100% agree with you. Um, I sold three of my companies before the age of 30, and all of them are different different industries. The one was uh, events and marketing agency. The other one was um, in uh, in, um, in publication, and the other one now currently is um, is in the beauty industry, hair extensions, which is like a ten billion dollar industry. 
it's 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 big so uh, you should not you should not see yourself just doing one thing exactly yeah and um when you are looking at a property or you are looking at a um, development or you're looking at a company or a brand to invest in what is it that you specifically look for and what is what is it what that will you know um, make this deal happen for you that you want to have into this deal what's my return on cash that's mm -hmm. number one um, how much life of mine is this investment gonna take okay. everything you know the price for success is how much life you're willing to give up so I always look at it in real estate it's real simple how much money am I gonna put in um, how easy is it to manage or you know retrofit the property to get maximum dollar and um, you know what is the finance value forever in perpetuity what is the average equity appreciation how long will I be able to what are the what what will the rents increase over the next decade uh, what what is financing look like what is refinancing look like what is cash out refinancing look like over the debt the next decade um, and so I look at it also how will this um, add to my portfolio will it be a burden on my management team and support team or will it just will actually lower my cost because we can just it'll fit right into what we're already managing uh, uh, on hand so I look at that when it comes to real estate when it comes to businesses and brands I do a little bit of the same but then I also look into who's managing and operating the business who am I going to be married to and again going back to the other question is you know what is the exit strategy exactly the divorce right yes this is, this is, and you know what? I am. I cannot wait for this podcast to go out in twenty four hours because the the people's minds are going to be blown away by the value that you have already delivered. Like you are, like literally blowing my mind right now. And it's and again, <laughs> like and I mean, we're not even halfway through this through this podcast. And like again, thank you so much for taking the no time problem. to do no this. No problem. Right. And um, let's talk about your book quickly. The heart of the deal. You um, tell us about the book and what inspired the book. Well, the book I felt was necessary because in this world of so much free flowing information, uh, Instagram stories, Facebook, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Twitter, LinkedIn, it's easy for somebody's story to get lost. And so I wanted something solid, something foundational, something that you could reference, something that I could give away to libraries, even prisons and you know and and donate to schools where people could pick it up and be inspired you know and not only inspired but learn something and and and, and apply it so that was number one number two uh, you you cannot be a successful uh multi-millionaire or billionaire and not have a book it's very important i mean everybody who's somebody uh that reaches a certain level has a book i wanted to make my mother proud my family proud and uh, so I, I, I added a lot of uh, autobiographical components to the book uh, so that I, I could kind of give them their shine as well. Uh, but beyond that, you know, a book is, you know, you, when, you, when you, the word author comes from authority. So you cannot be an authority in your business, in your industry, if you're not an author. So I wanted to be an authority in what it is that I do and speak on that and write on that so the book uh does that for me and it's a great marketing tool it opens up the platform uh to be able to do a lot of media and speaking engagements and press and really draw attention to what it is that i did and what it is that i'm doing that is i, I absolutely 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 love that everything that you just said and um and tell me that within your book, um, we, you are such an amazing businessman, a great business acumen. Now, with business comes selling. So obviously you are amazing at selling. What are five tips that you can give to people on how to sell better their product or their service or their brand? First, figure out if you're a natural salesperson. If you're not a natural salesperson, you need to hire a good salesperson you know a good salesperson 
they go after the ones that say no. Those are the ones that are the most valuable to them. Like a person like me, I I ignore all the um, the wins. Every those wins are easy. I I want the 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 no, the loss. That's yeah. the one. And you kind of get a high off of achieving the unachievable because the person that says no is saying no to your competition also. So that's like prime territory for you to get something that nobody else can get. Yeah. So a real salesperson is gunning for that. And if you don't have that within you, it's very hard to, 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 to kind of be born with it or be taught. It's something that's a little bit of a natural ability um, by either competition or money motivates you or a win motivates you or some sort of uh, childhood event motivates you, but you need to have it. And if you don't have it, you have to be able to identify people that do have it and keep them incentivized and motivated. So I think those are the key things. But until you realize you don't have it and not everybody's born with it, you should really, really dive into books, business books, read magazines and, 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 and e-magazines like your magazines and, and, and follow people on Instagram and, and Facebook and kind of see what other thought leaders are doing and how they sell their product directly and indirectly. And if that's something that, that you can do, then you're great. A good example would be Gianni Versace, right? Mm -hmm. You would think the guy was shy and behind the scenes. But when you really dive deep, this guy was doing television interviews, radio interviews, he was doing commercials, he was doing, he would come out humbly at the end of every fashion show and just, you know, put his hands in a prayer, bend over and say thank you, and then go behind the curtains. But behind the scenes, he was busy out there promoting and selling and selling and selling. So a lot of times people don't understand that even the most shyest person in the world, like there's actors out there like Johnny Depp. He's not an extroverted type of guy when he's not acting. But when a movie's out, he's on every talk show, every news show and radio show out there selling, selling the next movie. So you have to have that salesmanship. Yeah, I, I mean, you literally sell yourself the minute you walk into the uh, into the door of a boardroom or an office or wherever you are constantly selling yourself and you always need to just be prepared to sell and close, right? Exactly. Yeah, and what do, what do you think is the importance, why do you think is it, is it important to have a business coach or a mentor, a mentor for any person in business or someone that wants to go into, uh, into entrepreneurship? I don't know any athlete, whether it's Olympian, boxing, basketball, baseball, you name it, even golf, that doesn't have a coach, that doesn't have a mentor, that doesn't have them reading their plays, even a race car driver, even a jockey that races or has a coach, a conditioning coach, a mental coach. If you're in business, and this is how you're going to make money and achieve wealth and success, and you don't have a coach or a mentor, then you're not going to be successful. You're just not going to be the second. And the bottom line is there's a lot of opportunities for you to educate yourself, of course. But self-help books only work if you can help yourself. Yep. And if you, if you haven't been able to reach your goals so far, then you need to turn it up a notch and find somebody that can tell you what's right or wrong. A lot of times people don't, don't look for help because they, they, for fear that somebody's going to tell them something that they already know that they should or should not be doing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, a business coach or mentor is there to keep you accountable and make sure that you are doing the right moves and that you're achieving goals. Exactly. Yeah. And what do you think about the Women Entrepreneur Platform on how we are helping women in business, build businesses and empowering women in business? I think you're leading by example. I think that you are a great networker. I think that you're taking advantage of all the modern platforms that are available to you today and that you are finding your way into having conversations and interviews with people that are are untouchable, the unreachable, 
but for some reason you're reaching them and you're getting in touch with them and you're picking their brains and you're asking them questions that no one else asked them. So you yourself are leading by example and you're providing a platform uh, of, of, of free content, free information, but they also can get even more valuable information by learning more about your organization and joining and, and taking advantage of the fruits of your labor and who knows what, where that could take their careers. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. That is, um, when I started Women Entrepreneur, it, the, the main key focus is to deliver value to women and ask the questions to, to world leaders that no one is asking and no one is thinking of asking, but everyone is, is having that question in their minds, but they think, well, I can't reach Kim Kiyosaki. I can't reach Anthony Lolly. I can't reach Grand Cardone. I find a way to reach those people to get answers for the people that will help them in their businesses. So that is the, that is. Well, let me tell you something. You have the it factor. Not everybody has it because guys like, you know, uh, Kiyosaki or Grant or myself, we recognize people that have the it factor and you have the it factor. So doors open for you. You know, you know how to ask the right questions. You know how to present. You only get one chance to make a first impression. And so right off the bat, you make the right impression with the words you use and the kind of work that you put behind your brand. Um, anybody can recognize it that's been successful because you're on your way up there. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Wow. That's, 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 that's um, coming from you. It's really, and it's, I'm, I'm so grateful and humble. That's, that's really great feedback. Thank you so very much for that. I appreciate that. And um, so the last question would go to, if you could give entrepreneurs the very last step of your life, what will that be? The very last step of my life? Uh, tip, um, like a- Oh, uh, tip. Yeah, like a tip. This is, a, this is the only tip that you can give to people, your very last one, what will it be? Philanthropy. I think that, what I learned very early on by looking at some of the biggest wealthy success stories, you know, going back a hundred years, all of them at the end of their career, even Bill Gates, they dedicated their life and focus, you know, business, money, success, and wealth. It's really like a game. It's like a sport. After a while, there's only so many houses you can live in, so many cars you can drive. So if you incorporate philanthropy early on into your business concept, it's going to carry you through some of those lows because every business has those lows. But if you have, you know, foundations and a purpose that you cannot let down because the more money you make, the more money you can give. And if you can incorporate that early on into your business model and your personal model and mindset, I think that you're going to, you know, it's good karma and you're going to, work and go the extra mile because it's not just yourself and your family, but it's other people that can't help themselves that you're helping. So you're going to have that willpower to survive and plow through. And I think that's very, very important for anybody wanting to get into their own business. I love that. Anthony, thank you so very much for uh, spending 45 minutes with us today and giving up 45 no minutes of your very valuable time. We no appreciate problem. you. And um, once again, I'm grateful um, for, to have you on the show today. And thank you once again for your time. Anytime. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. And I wish you a wonderful evening in New York. Thank you. Likewise. All right. All right chat soon. Thanks, Anthony. Bye. 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 You've been listening to the Woman Entrepreneur Podcast, the number one success platform for female entrepreneurs. Visit our website, womanentrepreneur.co, for your daily motivation and business growth expert advice. Until next time, play big, think big, and impress yourself.